And what I want to do is I actually want to set up routes and see how they move through this internetwork without going into a lot of detail about how the static route is working. All right, so we're going to dive into the demonstration here in just a second. What I want to do first is explain my diagram. What I have here is I have two workstations. I have my workstation over here on the left, and that is, has an IP address of 10.0.1.10. And then I have this other workstation over here just to give us a device to ping, and that is 192.168.10.10. And I have two routers in between us. Now I've already pre-configured these routers with the base configuration. So they have all of their IP addresses are configured, and all of the security is set up, as well as the host name changed. So we can connect to these routers and just configure the static routes to make the network work. I've already configured the IP addresses on the workstation as well. So here's what we want to do. We want my workstation to be able to reach the other workstation. The router, in its default state with just the IP addresses configured, will only have two routes in the routing table on each device. On router 1, we're going to have a route to network 10.0.1.0 24. And we're also going to have a route to 172.16.10.0 slash 30. So I have two directly connected routes on here. What this means is if I want to send a message from my workstation to the other workstation, and I type ping 192.168.10.10 on my workstation, that message will get leave my workstation, end up on router 1. When it ends up on router 1, router 1 will consult its routing table. Right now it only has two routes, it won't get there. So we're going to have to add a route. When we add the route, we need three pieces of information. The three pieces of information we need are the network address we're trying to reach, the subnet mask of that network, and then the next hop IP address. Now the next hop IP address isn't all that complicated to understand. There's only two rules that the next hop IP address really needs to meet in order to be a proper next hop. Essentially what that next hop IP address is it's the IP address of the next device we're going to send it to. So if I want to reach 192.168.10.0 slash 24, I need to send my messages to router 2, and the IP address of router 2 that I'm going to send it to is the one nearest to router 1, 172.16.10.1. The two rules then of that next top address are, is that one, when we're configuring router 1 with a static route, the next hop has to be an IP address that's part of a directly connected network to router 1. 172.16.10.0 slash 30 is directly connected to router 1. 172.16.10.1 is on network 172.16.10.0 slash 30. Since this IP address is on a network that router 1 is aware of, we may use it as the next hop address. We cannot use 192.168.10.1 as our next hop because router 1 does not have a route to get to 192.168.10.1. As a matter of fact, that's the exact problem we're trying to solve. We're trying to reach that network. So our next hop address for that route always has to be directly connected to our router. The second rule of that next hop address is that it cannot be an IP address on the router we're configuring the static route on. So on router 1, if we're trying to configure a static route to reach 192.168.10.0 over here, slash 24, my next top address may not be the IP address directly connected to my router. So what this means is in this particular example, I only have one IP address that can be my next top, and that is 172.16.10.1. Let's go configure that and test it.